Now let's create a simple base texture for the skin. So let's concentrate down on the kind of legs and arms here. And we're going to make sure that we're on the body texture set. Right now we don't have any layers. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just set up a simple base color layer. And so I'm just going to add a fill layer. And then let's turn off the height, roughness, everything but color. And then in the base color, I'm going to add kind of a, a blue just so we can see what's going on. And then we can modify this a little bit later. Now we want to mask off the color to only those parts that are the body. So we'll create a black mask. And then we'll go back in with our fill. Go to our UV chunk fill. And then uh, we're going to make sure this is on white. And then we'll go ahead and click on those different areas. And we can do that in the 3D view or in the UV view. And then let's go up here, get that one, that one. And then these two in the back. All right, so those are the parts of the body that are the skin or the, the parts under the clothing, basically. All right, so we have a color now. We can call this something like uh, skin base color. And now I want to add a little bit of bumpiness and also color that we can uh, layer on top of this. And so I'm going to add a new fill layer. Let's go ahead on this one and I'm going to go to procedurals and I want to get a fractal and let's use this fractal sum three. And so on this fill layer, we're going to come down to, I'll come down to the height. And I'm going to drag this fractal sum three into the height. Now you can see the effect of this and it's not really what we want. And so we can modify this, come down to our parameters under that height. We can choose to change the balance, which you can see will modify that, which doesn't really help us all that much. What I want to do is really decrease the scale. And so let me come up to our scale and I'm going to start setting this a little bit higher. So do maybe five. And let's do maybe 10. Okay. So something like that. Now this is obviously way too aggressive there. And so I want to adjust the height to do that. We'll add a filter and let's go ahead and add a height adjustment. And then in our height adjustment, we'll go ahead and dial this in. Okay. So bring that down. So it's something more like that. And then we can go back in here and mess with the scaling. So we might want to make that a little bit higher. So maybe up even 40, 50, something like that. Give us a nice little texture base there. Now we want to mask this off as well. So I'll go ahead and choose a black mask. And then we'll go in and mask off the areas that we want. And the legs and then the rest of the hands and then those shoulder areas and the back. Okay. Now this fill layer right now has a solid color. That's why it just looks gray like that. And so what we can do is drop in this fractal sum as base color as well. So we'll drop it into base color. So that gives us something like that. The scaling should be the same. And so now we can choose some of our blend modes. We could use like an overlay or a multiply. And you can see that will allow us to kind of blend these together. So we could try soft light, something like that. And so now what we can do is go back into our color of that initial layer. And you can see as we change that color, we still get the variation on top of it as well as the bump. And so we could actually make this a completely different hue just by changing that base color. Let's make it kind of gray, but a little bit blue. Go back to more of a blue. And you can always take this blending down a little bit. All right. Let's also go back in on this one. And we've got the fractal tied into the base color that we're blending on top of the blue or the, the color that we've defined here. And then we've also got it tied into the height. Let's go ahead and add it also to the roughness. 
Now, right now you can see that everything is really, really rough. And so we can add another adjustment here. Let's go to levels. So we want our levels to affect the roughness. And so I'm gonna to start to pull these sliders in to the low and high of the roughness. And you can see, we can start to see the shininess come through in those upper areas. And so it depends on what you want the shiniest part of that to be versus what you want the kind of dullest part of it to be. So I'm gonna do something like that, okay? And you can always go back in here and modify that a little bit. And so let's go ahead and I want to add on top of this, another bump that is sort of a scaly kind of a look. And so you can really have some fun and start to layer these things on top of each other. So let's go ahead and add a new fill layer on top of this. And this layer, I only want to be the uh, bump and maybe also the height. So let's turn off the color and let's turn off the metalness. And let's come down to the height. And you can see there are a couple of cell options here. I'm gonna choose this cells three and drop it into the height. All right, you can see that is again, covering the whole thing. So we'll wanna mask that off again. So let's start by going to our black mask, back to our tool and start masking off, start masking off these other pieces up here as well and then back at the back. And we'll have to mask uh, these out eventually here as well to show the kind of bony texture. But now we've got that scaling. Now, obviously the, the scale of the scales is not correct. And so let's go ahead and grab that initial layer. We've got the height here. And so let's play with the scale slider. So I'm just gonna dial this up until we get something that is more like what we want. And I want it to be tiled uh, fairly high number. And so I'm gonna set my scale to 10. So we get something like that. And I'm actually gonna remove the roughness contribution to this and just go with the height. All right, so we get something like that. Now, again, we can still go back and adjust the base color. If we wanna add a little bit more color into it or make it a little bit darker. So we could do something like that. Now let's also go ahead and let's use some of the mesh maps that we have to actually layer on top of this. And so what we can do, and the way to do that is, we can go ahead and add a fill layer. I'm just gonna bring it to the top. And in the fill layer, I'm just gonna turn everything off with the color. And if we click on this button here, we can actually choose all the textures we have available. And among those are the mesh maps that we calculated at the beginning. And so if we come in here, we've got the ambient occlusion maps. I'm gonna actually search for curvature. And this will bring up all the curvature maps that we've created for all of our different models. And so if we come in here, you can see this is actually the body. And so I'm gonna go ahead and click on this one. You can see how the darkness of the crevices emphasizes kind of the model detail. And so what we can do with this, if we want to, is we can use some of our blend modes and we can just add this onto our model. So we can multiply it, overlay it is a good one see screen there. And again, we do have also the ability to dial down this intensity. And so we can take this down and it's just a, a quick way to emphasize kind of the, the lower parts, kind of the shading and the shadows inside there and the high spots. And so we can play around with our shading there, our fade, go back into the initial color. And let's say we want to adjust that, make it a little bit brighter. We can do that while still using our maps. All right, and you can do that with the ambient occlusion map uh, if you wanted to as well. So once we've got kind of a quick base done for our, our skin, we've got some overall roughness, we added some uh, kind of uh, pattern scales to it. The next thing that we wanna do is add a bone texture because up here, we want these parts of the mesh to be a completely different texture, kind of sticking out from the flesh. And so we'll take a look at how we can start to blend those together in the next lesson.